So in the kitchen, um, we mainly use the light that's over the sink. I kind of use that as uh, it's at night when we're coming up. That may be the only light that's on. It's an LED light. But we have our echo here. This is the echo that's mainly in our kitchen and eating kitchen area. Um, so it's just tied up again to a smart thing switch on the wall. You might be able to see that little blue light over there in the corner. But um, it's fairly straightforward. It, usually it's worked by a timer with smart things. So it turns on at a certain time of day, maybe when it gets dark and then turns, uh, stays on until we, we go to bed um, and whatnot. But we can also trigger it obviously with the echo. So Alexa, turn on kitchen. Okay. So you can see, I mean, it's fairly quick when that happens. And usually the rule of thumb that I think of is they say that it takes about three seconds to walk over and turn on or off a light switch. So that's quicker than that. It's really helpful when we're, you know, if you're in the kitchen, aside from the things that the Echo can do, like set a timer or multiple timers for cooking if your hands are dirty or whatnot. But it's also easy for us to turn off and on that light. Or if we come in from the garage, again, our laundry room has a motion sensor, but the rest of the house may not have a light on. So it's easy for us if your hands are full of uh, from shopping or whatnot, that it's very easy to turn that off and on. So, Alexa, turn off kitchen. Okay. So this is the laundry room. This is fairly simple. Um, we just had an issue here where we have a light switch. It's covered by some coats and whatnot, so we can't do a occupancy sensor for a light. And this is where we really come in and out of the garage all the time. So all it does is use a smart home, uh, uses a separate sensor, and then when you walk in the laundry room, the light turns on so you can see right over here uh, the the wall sensor and and here is where our light switch is actually kind of covered up behind there so um, that was a quick and easy solution to to make that piece work and then after a period of time that that, that light will go back off so it's just triggered by that obviously talks to smart things and and turns on that light so another way I use smart things to kind of solve an issue was we have this is our master closet and our master bedroom. Um, and as you can see there, the light switch is on the outside of the closet, which is a little bit awkward when you wanna walk in and turn on the light, especially if you're, uh, if it's early in the morning and you don't want the light to shine out of the closet and you're trying to close the door. So um, I wanted to have a way to control that and it's not inside the closet. So it, what I did was replace that with a smart thing switch and then we can actually have a sensor inside the closet that checks motion detection and turns on for a period of time using smart things. So if we go in here, we can see that there is a switch up here and that turns on and turns the light on. So that's again, fairly straightforward, like our laundry room scenario, but we can see that the switch is out here and um, we get the light and then after a period of time, that will turn off in the closet. So the need from this really came from a couple things is one is we have a projection TV down here. You might be able to see it's kind of dark up here in the corner and, and a large screen to, to project onto. Now that works best in the dark. So we're in a basement here. I've got blackout curtains around. So while it's good and dark, the, the issue with that is if you're trying to come down here with a drink or to sit down, you want to be able to get to the couch without, you know, stubbing your toe or whatnot. So you need an easy way to control the lighting. Um, and then in conjunction with that, the, the other components is nice as well. So right now, obviously we can use the Echo to tie in. I have a smart things switch here on the wall, just like we do upstairs. So I can be, Alexa, turn off wall. Okay. More of the, the scenario is when we actually come downstairs. Alexa, turn on wall. Okay. So that way we can go and, and settle in and get situated. And then that jumps into the next component of that, which we'll, which we'll show here shortly, which is actually to be able to turn on the AV components with voice command and sync that up with the harmony. That's the other piece that's kind of critical here. So we'll jump into that now. So again, I realize this is kind of dark, but kind of want to just show you how this actually works. So now say that we've come down here, we're ready to watch a movie and, and we want to, or maybe TV, say we want to watch Netflix on our Roku. Uh, what can we do with that? So all we have to simply do is go, Alexa, Turn on Roku. Okay. So this process takes a moment, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through and turn on the correct AV components. It's gonna turn on the projector up here, and then over time, it'll actually turn off the lights. Now, again, one of the benefits here is it takes a while. It takes about 20, 25 seconds for the projector to turn on fully, 
and for the input to go so you can kind of see it turning on here but then it's nice to be able to have those lights on until that's fully powered up again with a regular tv and lcd or whatnot um, it may be a lot quicker for that tv to turn on so we'll see here i timed it so we can get and at least get to uh, a certain uh, page and then that turns off so now we've, we've got that component um, the other piece of that is we can actually uh, the, the the remote control sink was another piece that was important so this is the harmony remote if we can actually kind of see here if i can actually focus at the same time so what i found is initially i thought oh i'll just get the harmony hub and use an existing remote control and we'll kind of do it that way but it's very important that we can actually sync up those components so uh, otherwise things get out of sync again you are often talk about the, the spouse approval factor in these scenarios and want my wife and my kids to be able to use this for the most part. Um, so th this is important to be able to have that synchronization uh, of the remote control. So that's where the harmony comes in. The harmony really isn't flawless. I mean, it's I think it's good at what it does. It does take some tinkering to get it to do what you want to because they try to make it so user friendly that for those of us that like to get into the knobs and dials a little bit more, um, it doesn't quite work as well. But then again, um, that's kind of how that piece works. So it's got it's very easy for us to control that the co component there. We've got different functions, and I may do a blog post on that part of it. I know it's kind of hard to see here with the focus because it wants to focus on the TV, not that part. But then say you're done for the night, the evening, and you're going to go back upstairs, then we can just say, Alexa, turn off Roku. Okay. And it'll go through the opposite sequence there. So obviously it turns off the projector, it turns off the receiver, and then it turns on these lights. I don't put as much of a delay there because once components turn off, then they turn off that way. And this goes back to sort of the home screen with all the programmed activities in there. So that's just a quick overview of what I've done, been able to do with these integrated components. So thanks for joining me. Hopefully this was informational and helpful. Again, I usually just do this for my own sanity to try to document some of these things. Sometimes technology and IoT and home automation is pretty straightforward and it's things that you just want to kind of showcase. Other times it's really tedious uh, and, and takes a little bit of work to get through. And again, I don't think this these solutions are necessarily very difficult to integrate, at least from a technology perspective. The, the logic and the order makes sense. It just takes a lot of uh, thought process as to which components turn on. Sometimes you have to do things in a specific order, first putting it in harmony, then setting it up in smart things and exposing that to the echo so that we can speak to that and use the voice controls. So again, hopefully this was beneficial. Um, if there's any questions I can answer, I'm glad to do that. Again, I'm kind of just documenting this as I go. So I'm by no means an expert, but hopefully this was helpful and we'll talk to you next time.